Whether you're Taika Virgin or have loved Waititi's work from Eagle vs. Shark up through Hulk vs. Thor. He's a friend from work. You can see that Waititi's only just begun. On this IMD Brief, we break down how the New Zealand jokester went from low-budget vampires to Marvel, Star Wars, and beyond. Oh, it's definitely not a good time to be a Nazi. Unless you're Taika Waititi. Wait, that came out wrong. The director plays Fuhrer in his new film Jojo Rabbit, and its premiere at TIFF will surely rewrite history. <laughs> but it wasn't that long ago that he and friend slash fellow filmmaker Jemaine Clement were making short films in their New Zealand home to establish their specific brand of improvised low-key comedy. I mean, we're all good, but we could be better at this. I mean, you know. What We Do in the Shadows began as a 2005 short that was remade as a hilarious 2014 feature, then spun off into two series with plans to make a future film centered on the vampire's nemesis, the werewolves. <laughs> Clement, who broke out on his musical HBO series Flight of the Concords in 2007, had Waititi write to and direct four episodes, including this tender ode to a long-limbed co-worker. I had a budgie, but it died. Whoa, whoa. I like Apart from collaborations with Clement, Watiti's own films are much more personal, human dramedies, like 2009's Boy and 2016's heartwarmingly crass Hunt for the Wilder People, which propelled young Julian Dennison into tentpole franchises like 2020's Godzilla vs. Kong and 2018's Deadpool 2. Stay back or Justin Bieber dies! <laughs> Justin Bieber, he called you Justin Bieber. <laughs> but it was 2017's Thor Ragnarok that made Waititi a household name, as his fresh take on the MCU's age-old Asgardian was the course correct needed to atone for the dark world. Has anyone here fought the Grand Masters champion? Doug has? Doug! Oh, no. Doug's dead. Since Ragnarok was a critical and box office hit, Marvel Studios' prez Kevin Feige lined up Thor Love and Thunder for November 2021. Waititi personally convinced Natalie Portman to return to the MCU, and all he had to do was offer her Thor's mighty hammer. Just shut up and drive. All good news for Marvel fans, but bad for Warner Bros, who had to bump their production indefinitely down the road for Waititi's planned live-action remake of the epic futuristic anime, Akira. <laughs> And while Jojo Rabbit kicks off an award season sprint at the Toronto International Film Festival in September, Waititi will moonlight with Fox Searchlight on another project, an adaptation of the 2014 doc Next Goal Wins about longtime losers, the American Samoa soccer team. I'm just trying to prove we're not the same team anymore. I want to win a game. He just needs to wrap that up before Love and Thunder starts production in early 2020, which should be no sweat for the multi-hyphenate who is somehow also juggling a remake of Terry Gilliam's Time Bandits for Apple's new streaming service, crossing comic book lines for a rumored role in James Gunn's reboot of DC's The Suicide Squad, and cracking a script for an animated remake of the 80s colossal goof, Flash Gordon. Go, Flash, go! And somewhere in the midst of all that, he found time to voice the bounty hunting robot IG-11 for Disney Plus series The Mandalorian, which drops in November. Oh, and he also directed an episode because, hell yeah. Don't you agree? Which for a moment made us ask, will this future be too much Taika to take? People used to say a lot of nasty things about me. Not possible. So stay glued for more on Jojo Rabbit and our coverage of all the TIFF premieres at imdb.com slash Toronto.